Again, my name is Alan, and um, today I'm going to be presenting the latest UNO series called UNO 430, which is Waterproof All Around Edge Intelligence Gateway. And uh, before we get started, let's take a little bit one step back um, to talk about the UNO series, because UNO has been known as one of the, the legacy um, fitness platforms um, of Advent Tech um, computation portfolio. So UNO starts with 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. That's you guys probably have heard from previous presenter, or you guys have been sell it or use it um, in different occasions um, um, at the previous time. So basically 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 are serving on um, the general purpose of the UNO platform. So UNO 400, or we so-called 4,000 series, is, a new, is the newest addition to UNO family. So what it does, it has consists of two of the criteria. Basically, um, first of all, we'll be utilizing the new technology that are the three series of the UNO that didn't have it. Another criteria will be the robustity. In terms of the robustity, we're talking about waterproof is one of them and also um, 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 anti-explosion certification, which is going to be covered more in the area of oil and gas. So. The reason why I'm in my slide of the heading here, I put the first addition is because UNO 430 isn't going to be launched until the end of this month. It consists of two different models that we are looking at. And the first model is going to be issued. It's going to be completed the product of the development by the end of July. And the second version, which is um, consists of a class one division two and the IEC X explosion proof certification is going to be launched in the somewhere around October because of the time that we need to go through and completion of the lab. So let's get started by looking at about the UNO 4, 400 features family. Um, looking at the overall map we're looking at here, looking at the, on the left hand side will be UNO 420. The reason why I said consists of the new technology because it's using PoE power input. It has nothing to do with robustity, but as a PoE power input that allowing instead of using a, a, a regular DC adapters as a power source to source it up the Uno for to power up the Uno for twenty. Uno one seven Uno one seven one three seven two GH is not a new model, but this is the first model that we put into um, oil and gas sectors, where else it has class one division two um, certification. That's why it's been putting on the line in oil and gas segment area. Moving on to the UNO 410, which is going to be available in the Q3, it consists of, it's, it's going to be complete of C1D2, IECEX, and also it's, it's going to be the first UNO that's going to be starting using an M.2 technology. And now today for the main body of the UNO 430, we're looking at about complete of M.2 technology, IECEX, C1D2 ATX compliance of the of the anti uh, explosion proof certification, and all the wrong body of IP69 and the 68. So in the following slides, that's we're going to talk about specifically of Uno 430 and also touch a bit of area in terms of the class definition for C1D2 and the IECEX, where it's going to be falling to. So on the general scale, looking at the area of classification for a C1D2, the class one location is going to be classified with fanable gas, liquids, and the vapors in association with petroleum, dry clean plants, uh, spray finish areas. So these will be the class one that we are going to get our product into it. In class two location, it, com it consists of compostable dust, and the class through three location consists of fibers and the fillings. In terms of the hazardized location of the class definition, glass and vipers in division one, it says an explosive mixture continues to present or likely to occur during a normal operation. And the division two, uh, its definition is an, um, explode, an, an explosive mixture is not likely to occur in normal operation and may be accidentally be present. So our UNO products are fall into class one and the division two, whereas that is not in the top grade, but uh, it can also be partially inputted where it's going to be happening in a short period of the time for the explosive area. Okay. Uh, 
looking at ATAG zone classifications of zone, zone 1 and the zone 20, which is the highest standards that's by saying that continues present or present for a long period of the times. And zone 1 and the zone 21 is likely to occur in a normal operation or can be expected to be present frequently. A zone 2 and zone 2 2 is where is not likely to occur. And if it does, it will only exist a short period of the time. Because UNO 430 is the very first UNO that we are, are sending to get the IECX done. So the area of the certification we are looking at will be zone 2, zone 2, 2 to start off. It's all doing with uh, the presence of the time where it's going to be deployed and likely um, in the explosive area. And when if it happens, we are expecting it to be can be can be um, 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 happening in a very short period of the time. So in the future, if we get this done, um, and then um, um, Uno family will be looking into to get into the upgrade to maybe zone one and zone twenty one or zone zero to zone twenty. So Uno four thirty is basically also called a learning model for us in the area of IECX and in the ATAX zone classification. Moving on to look at the UNO 430 in terms of the spec, a CPU wise is using Atom E3950, um, which is consists of, of um, four core and a four thread, 1.6 gigahertz, and with built in eight gig memories. And the storage, the wireless modules are consist of by using M.2 technologies. So unlike any other UNOs that normally in you know, associate with mini PCIe, it is using purely M.2 technologies. And then it comes out of two different models, the H, which is going to be a metal versions, which is the metal versions is in the area of the connectors. This is going to be the model that's going to be um, be beginning completion for C1, T2 and the IEC X. The rubber based version will be in associate again on the connector wise and it's called uh, Uno 430 E1A. Now, on the overall body wise, that is going to be pure metal casing, it's like the normal Uno that we normally have um, on, on the other series. And in terms of all the COM port, the USB and the LAN cable, it's going to be using by using the M32 and the M12 connectors. That's where the connectors matters in terms of, of by, by distinguish of the E1H and the E1A. On the IP wise, certification wise, we have um, both certification that's complied already, which is IP69K and IP68. On the mounting wise, unlike most of the UNOs, it provides, it doesn't have um, the rooms for the ding rail mount because it serves as a box already. So it consists of the wall mount and the port mount. On the OS wise, of course, um, Win 10, the landings are the usuals that we are going to be, be ready for those two series. Now, looking at the product positioning, um, E1H is going to be um, on C1D2 compliant and the IECX compliant. It's going to be available around the time that October was mentioned previously. And the E1A is going to be launched by the end of this month, which is um, perfectly for a general outdoor and the indoor application. In, the, in terms of the overview, the SMA connectors is in associate with those M.2 um, um, with, with those M.2 uh, modules that I mentioned previously for Wi Fi and the LTE. And then in terms of the H and A's of the cable gland, cable gland is basically a technology that can um, can provide a, a, a top notch uh, lockness of those two different connectors in between M32 and M12. I have more details um, explanation later in the following slides. So as you can see that E1H is it going can, it can to be pure, uh, it's going to be pure metal. The reason why it's called TBD is we might, the placement of those connectors might get changed in the end of the day when the E1H is complete. So the team's working on with the lab that of the placement, it might get changed or the dimension of the M32 might also get changed as well. But one way or another, it doesn't affect the overall design of the Uno 430, whereas the placement of the connector might be might be changed um, um, as, as the final product has been released. And the E1A is purely rubber case, 
and then the placement is going to be that as what you see there with in, in, a, in a social with 2M32 and the 4M12. And looking at the, just let me get rid of this, okay, looking at the overview um, of the inside of Uno 430, this area provides an additional covering, so meaning that it's additional protections for the motherboard and also the modules. So M.2 in terms of 3250 and 3242 are for the Wi-Fi, the LTE and the 5G. And the M.2 to 42 are basically for the, um, the storage. And then we have M32, that's basically for the RJ45 LAN cable and in associated with other M12 connectors for a power uh, for the power cable RS232, 422, and the 4A5. The LTE, the multi-tech LTE module support here are basically for basically for the US market that they have come up defined with this multi tech LT module that can be mounted directly. Instead of opening another um, layer of this metal casing, they can they can actually attach the module directly on there. The reason why I'm saying that is because the Uno 430 was actually inspiring by um, the US customer called Schumanzer. So um, what the team has defined is to do the OEM for them and then bring on this model to a standard product. Move on on the front access design for the maintenance. So basically, all these four different SKUs is unscrewed, and then we can open out the hinge for in terms of 45 degrees of the door. And these are going to be what's going to be looking at by connecting all the different M32 and the M12 cables in terms in conjunction with all these antennas up there. So yes, it's going to be a little bit bulky, and then but it provides the out. The, the ultimate um, um, robust and the protection of the product. So in terms of the cable gland, assemble SOP, this will give you a bit of idea about how the cable gland technology works. Now, most of the M12, the general M12 is you lock it in and then you twist it. But with cable gland, the reason why it provides the ultimate um, um, lockness or the tightness in terms of those connectors is you need to physically use a wrench to unscrew it, put the cable in, and then wrench it up, and then to get the ultimate tightness. So it does apply in between those M32 and the M12 on the Uno 430. In terms of the market trend and the, and the, applique, and the analysis, the general Uno are actually designed for a DIN rail, it's like other 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 series, DIN rail mount and the wall mount, and ideally, in the most of the cases, um, um, the SI or end customer will put it inside and the chassis if they want to actually deploy to the hazardized or, or, or enter explosive area. And with Uno 430, because it's already comply, it's going to comply with all the with all the explosion um, proof um, certification. It doesn't really require an external chassis, but of course, on the downside, it doesn't it it, it doesn't offer the ding railed um, um, mounting. Okay. Move on to the application value proposition for the E1H. Uh, where else is going to be playing majority in the oil and gas industry? Um, 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 Based on the certifications going to get in the in the C1T2 and the IECX, so it can be used in the three different area. We will look at the oil gas industry that's in the, in the social with upstream, midstream, and the downstream. So one way or another, it still serve as an um um in the general purpose. Um, it still serve as data acquisitions on the H level, but also can be playing to the H um, data acquisition in the area of of the oil drilling site or the or the outdoor um, oil pipelines or the oil refinery areas. And not to mention, of course, on the mining industry, it can also be playing on the great area for the age um, data acquisition as well. Looking at the A, where else there's no um, IECX or C1D2, but completely IP69K and 68 um, 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 compliance, it can be positioned in gradient in the outdoor area, especially in the factories, um, um, in the different industry, in the hydraulics, and also on the roadside as well. 
looking at the compelling features as kind of like a, a wrap up, it does provide IPCC-K of the waterproof. Now, I want to spend a little bit of the time on the IPCC-9K is because people tend to understand that if you comply IPCC-9K, then you will instantly get compliant for the IPCC-8. But in reality, it does require two different procedures of the testing. IPCC-8 is actually you immerse the entire product underneath the water. That's for Uno 430. And IPCC-9K is you literally um, 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 sprinkle uh, a very strong of the pressure of the water from the from like from the fire hose or or in of the horse to the water for a long period of the product to a long period of the time. And Uno 430 has complied with those two different very high um, distinguished um, um, level for the waterproof and the dust proof. And also, um, in another level for, for the easy wiring, even though the wrench that I mentioned is does require, it seems a little bit complicated, but one way or another, it still provide a, wild, a relative easy wiring comparing to a general other M12 installation anywhere. Of course, um, unlike with put, putting in the DIN rail site, you can put it in the wall mount or the polar mount. And of course, not to mention with the explosion proof certificate that we are going to get later on of the day. And this will be a sort of like scenario um, because it's fairly new. So our treat list case study will be like a scenario case study where else, like general other UNOs, it connects to the PLC or the temperature or the humidity sensors transmitting the data, acting as age, acquiring the data, and then transmit to another level. The great robustity will not limit to the area of the placement that you're actually installing the UNO 430. So this will give you a bit of an understanding for the ingress protection of where it's going to looking at. So again, like I mentioned, 68 and the 69K are the highest standards that we've complied in both area. And other than that, these are the oil and gas product offering that I mentioned previously. Um, Uno 1372GH are the first one that we get at C1D2, but there's no IECX and the UNO 410 is we are going to get both C1D2 and the IECX, but again, it doesn't have IP, a strong IP rating as like UNO 430. So UNO 430 is more like the overall um, 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 comprehensive deals if you look at having C1D2, IECX, and also a strong IP rating, and also at a very strong operating temperature as well. These are the oil and gas product offering by other sectors under industrial IoT. Majority of the products that you're seeing here are compliant with C1D2. Only Uno 430 and also Uno 410. That's really for our area in Australia and also a bit of AK products as well. In terms of the key players in the market that you have seen here, we've defined between end users, contractors, oil field service, and the domain focus SI. And these are one way or another are actually getting advantage solutions from bottom line here, either direct or indirectly, and then fulfilling to their market where it's upstream, middle stream, or the downstream. But yeah, that's a, a quick one, fairly quick ones. And uh, any questions on this Uno 430?